wait in a couple of minutes if anyone else is coming, but I appreciate you coming tonight to the um, second public outreach meeting for the Peerview Way Bridge and Lifeguard Headquarters project. I'm the project manager from the City of Oceanside, Dara Woods. Um, tonight, we want to give you an update for those who couldn't attend our first outreach meeting last summer, um, kind of a brief update, project scope, history, and what's transpired over the last uh, several months to a year. Um, and after that presentation, we'll have uh, opportunity for Q&A. And then after that, we do have a bunch of information on the side of the room, some visuals. Um, feel free to provide comments, stickies, comment cards, but we appreciate you guys coming tonight. And with that, I will defer to Jared from Moffat Nickel to start our presentation. And then we'll go to Rick from RNT to, to continue that presentation. So thank you. <clears throat> Okay, thanks, Adara. Um, well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is our second public outreach meeting for the Pureview Way Bridge and Lifeguard Headquarters. Uh, again, just a reminder, it's uh, this project brought to you by Measure X. Just wanted to point that out. Um, so what, uh, I'm gonna move over here so I can see. So what is this project? Um, again, the, the primary focus is project. Um, it's a 95 year old concrete bridge that leads to the existing timber pier. And uh, you know, our project limits are generally what you see here in the outline here in red. Um, again, we got the, the concrete pier. Um, the, the timber portion of the pier is not included in this as, as well as any of the various beachfront improvement projects. Uh, the key issues we're addressing with this project are the deteriorating condition, uh, various CEQA historic requirements, uh, lifeguard program, obviously, um, sea level rise, ADA access, uh, public and visitor uses, um, coordination with the California Coastal Commission, and again, as I mentioned, uh, collaboration with uh, the various beachfront projects. A little bit of history. Uh, the first timber pier was constructed in 1888, and over the years, it's been subsequently, you know, uh, either destroyed or removed and replaced. Uh, the current concrete bridges that are out there right now uh, were constructed in 1927, um, and then fast forwarding a little bit more, in 1987, uh, the current timber pier that's out there, which is actually the sixth pier that's been in place uh, was constructed and around the same time that lifeguard headquarters were constructed underneath the west end of the concrete bridges. Uh, just some, some other past history. Uh, in 2007, Moffat and Nickel conducted a, a very thorough uh, structural evaluation of both the timber pier and the concrete bridges. Um, and what did we find back then? Uh, so. 15 years ago in 2007, um, you know, we found uh, through a, a very uh, thorough uh, concrete investigation, we took a, a number of concrete cores. Uh, we found that the chloride content or the salt content um, inside the concrete had risen to a level of 14 times the limit for corrosion of reinforcing steel or the rebar that's inside reinforced concrete. Uh, Coming forward a couple more years, uh, if, if you recall, at one point the city was hanging nets underneath the pier, catching the, the falling concrete debris. Um, and so in 2016 to 2018, the, the city uh, went through an effort to, to patch and mitigate that falling concrete. Um, again, it wasn't necessarily a structural repair, but it's just a kind of a stopgap measure uh, to uh, alleviate some of the public concerns. Uh, the deterioration continues. Uh, this is uh, this photo on the on the left here is courtesy of uh, your your favorite lifeguard captain, Bill Curtis. Um, that piece of concrete fell out of the ceiling above his desk and landed right on his desk, and that's uh, that's what's continuing to happen. Um, the the photo on the right is in one of the storage areas, and again, you can see the delamination that's continued. Um, that, that's continuing and uh, anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, so we have a structure, a, a historic structure that is in 
generally poor condition and you know what what can we do about it so it's a historic structure uh, there's various CEQA requirements and one of those is from a historic aspect is to follow the guidelines set forth by the Secretary of Interior. Um, and so that kind of leaves us with, with two options. Um, we can either do a reconstruction, which is essentially a, a removal and replacement in kind to the exact you know, lines and dimensions from 1927, or we can go the restoration route. So what's on the screen here on the right, that's I'll kind of walk you through an example of what a restoration would look like. Uh, so the restoration, of course, would retain the most historic fabric of the structure, um, but we're kind of forced to kind of encapsulate, for example, this is a column here. We'd, we'd be forced to encapsulate the existing column with new reinforced concrete. And so just to give you a visual, um, here's a rendering of kind of what the existing condition looks like. Um, we would wrap reinforcing steel around it and then cast concrete around it. And, you know, visually it, it's going to really change the look of that historic structure. Other uh, historic considerations that we need to consider are, um, you know, here's an example here of uh, the original windows that were in the, that are, that were boarded up in the storage areas. Again, that area of the, the pier that used to be back in the day that those were changing rooms and bathrooms when it was first constructed. So that's something we, we are considering. Uh, another example here, um, you can see that the concrete railing, uh, again, it was originally constructed with precast concrete balustrades. And over the years, a uh, gunite coating was added you know, to various areas of the pier, but it kind of lost that sharpness, that crispness of you know, lines that it once had. And of course, other items that consider the, the, the metal railings and the lighting that has been replaced. So in summary, uh, reconstruction versus restoration. So what have, what have we found so far? Uh, obviously restoration uh, would, retain, would retain the most historic fabric. We, we know that. Um, but you know, what do we get with a reconstruction? We get a, a much longer service life. We get a brand new structure. Um, you know, we can accurately re replicate the, the 1927 appearance. Um, we can bring it up to current seismic code. Uh, you know, it's still eligible for historic designation. And one of the bigger con one of the bigger items is it's the best return on investment. Um, if we're just talking about the pier, the concrete pier itself, um, we're, we're talking about a 40% cost difference uh, um, by going with a reconstruction route. So we've gone over this in the past uh, with various community groups. Uh, you know, we had a public outreach meeting on this uh, last year. We met with various historic groups, um, including OPAC and SOHO. And, you know, really the, the overwhelming consensus is, you know, that our recommendation is to reconstruct the structure to maintain the look and feel of the character defining features. Um, and that has been the overall main consensus so far. Again, I mentioned sea level rise. Uh, as we know, there's already flooding that occurs on the strand. So um, the, the, the headquarters uh, sees issues during big storm events as well. Um, and so if we factor in sea level rise, that's only going to get worse. So just to kind of give you a visual here, uh, I'll, the light blue line here is a current storm event that we would consider um, with seven feet of sea level rise. That that dark blue line you see there is uh, you know what we're we're looking at dealing with. So one of the important aspects here is that the lifeguard headquarters is critical infrastructure, and so it's held to a higher risk and a higher design criteria when when considering sea level rise. And so one of the things we're we're going to try to do is keep various components of the lifeguard facilities high and dry. So uh, this year we we spent a lot of time in coordination with with the lifeguards in the city. Um, R and T architects that put together a, a questionnaire. This is kind of an example you see here. You know, trying to assess 
their current and future needs. And what did we find? So um, current lifeguard headquarters said uh, that the capacity is for 30 staff. But, but lifeguards right now, we, they have 98 staff right now. So you know, they're already over capacity. And 15 years in the future, we, they predict needing up to 130 staff. So that's, that's one aspect that's going on. Uh, the second, um, about a month ago, uh, it was approved at, to move forward with a 24-7 uh, lifeguard operation. So we have that to contend with. And then they also have a lot of insufficient space for storage. And, and so, you know, what does that all mean when we put it all together? Well, you know, figuring out their space needs, as you can see, they need about 2.4 times the amount of space that they currently have to, to meet their current needs. So what, you know, so we're, we're limited on space. So what, what have we looked at here? So now, for example, you know, we tossed around the idea of the, the community center, and we know that that's not favorable from the public's perspective, but the, the public prefers to leave that center as is. Um, you know, what about expanding the existing lifeguard headquarters? Well, again, we have uh, various CEQA historic requirements we must follow. So, you know, we can't really add a second story to that. We can't really ex expand the footprint of it. Um, and so that's kind of a, a non-starter there. Uh, you know, we've also looked at the, the Beach Operations Center. Um, and again, there just isn't enough space there. That's already dedicated space for other, uh, other city departments. Um, and again, you know, Betty's lot. And again, the, the public consensus we hear is that uh, that's again, a, kind of a no-go area. Um, finally, what about on the beach? You know, that's where a lot of lifeguard headquarters are. Um, this day and age, uh, getting a, a building approved at this location west of the Strand is, is very problematic and highly difficult and unlikely. So we focused on the Tin Fish restaurant area as an area to expand the lifeguard program into. And so really that's the only one, the only location that we've identified so far that's feasible. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Rick from R&T Architects. There Good evening, everybody. My name is Rick Espana with RIT Architects. So as Jared pointed out, uh, we're looking at the scenario of reconstruction of the pier bridge. And he also provided the amount of growth uh, or space that we need to support uh, the future lifeguards needs. So what we show here is, is basically a high level concept. It hasn't been, you know, we're, we're still just testing ideas. We want to get feedback. But essentially, this is what we're looking at. I'll kind of go through the main elements. Of course, one is shown in purple there. That is the reconstruction of the bridge, the stairways here, both on the north and south sides. <clears throat> Item two is underneath uh, where the current existing lifeguard facilities are. We would rebuild that too and give them a modernized facility. However, um, in, a, in addition, as, you, as uh, Jared showed, we need 2.4 times the current space needs. So where are we going to put that? So we we're looking at this area over here, area three, and we're, we're, you know, obviously the tin fish is there right now. So we'd be looking at additional storage space, um, um, additional office space, support space for the lifeguards, as well as potentially a, a, loc a space that uh, could be leased to, uh, for instance, another tin fish, or so on. So that's something we'd like to discuss. Um, Item four is an, uh, one of the other improvements. We need to bring ADA access from uh, Pacific <clears throat> down to the beach level. And um, sorry, one of the ways we're doing that is it's a two part or, uh, uh, process. When we put in a new ramp that takes you from Pacific Street down to the mid level landing of the pier bridge. And then from there, we would build a brand new elevator that takes you from the mid level down to the beach level. So you wouldn't see the elevator from at the street level. It's actually hidden and tucked into the, the pier or the bridge. So um, again, for ADA access, it's also for family strollers. Those of you, you know, who, who uh, 
cannot uh, take the stairway down to the street. Uh, we do know there's ADA parking here. However, you know, if you're having dinner here with family, friends, and someone's in a wheelchair, uh, now they can easily get down to the beach level. Um, item five is a new public view deck. So whatever this structure is here, we would like to put a, a, a public view deck to enhance the public experience on top of that so it can easily be accessed from the, from the north bridge or the south bridge. And then at the bottom, at the beach level, we, we're looking at an enhanced patio uh, uh, area here. So if there is like a tin fish or something like that or, or, or a food place, there's a place to actually kind of eat and you're out of the crowds, you're out of the, the main um, circulation areas. I'll, I'll show more of that here in a minute. And then um, item seven, I'm sorry, yeah, so item six. And item seven is, is creating kind of a new uh, area here that's for a uh, first aid patio. There we go. So this is a cross section on the, on the west end where the current lifeguard facilities are. So imagine this is a, a cutting through the building, through the bridge, and there, here are the two uh, flood lines that uh, Jerry was talking about earlier. So one of the first things we wanna do is if we are to rebuild this, we have to um, match the existing pier bridge right now. We can't change the elevations, it's gotta be fixed. We wanna make it look like it's always been there. Uh, so without changing that, we, we will raise this floor here up by three feet. Uh, obviously we're still uh, below the 100 year uh, flood line, but it, at least it's somewhat of a help. We'll, we'll have to probably uh, put some kind of drainage system in here. So if there ever is a major storm um, and this gets flooded, it can easily be cleaned out. However, the, the, the current finished floor is like right down here. So this helps a little bit. The garage and the storage, we don't have to raise that, but it's mostly the operations areas that we do wanna raise. Um, so let's look at uh, the east end. Oh, by the way, uh, so just real quick, the spaces that would that would be in this part of the, the project would be the locker rooms, uh, of course, the garage, uh, expanded office facilities uh, um, in, this, in this area here, the first aid courtyard, and the storage. Okay, correct. Well, that, that's the existing location for the lifeguards. So if we replace it or rebuild it, it's going to be the, in the same exact location. We can't expand out the uh, existing footprint. We have to stay exactly in the same can I ask a quick question? Yes. You answered my original question. So that's going to be the existing location of the lifeguard building. Okay. It just looks a little out of scale for me because the garage is it out of scale? No, this is this is using uh oh. yeah. But if we can, I'd like us to go through the entire presentation. No, we'll a little yeah. bit more to describe the question. Huh? It's so much easier when you ask the right I can go back to the slides too. I just want to make sure I want the whole package of it. So. And that, in fact, I only have a few more slides, so we can easily go into questions here pretty quickly. So yeah, that is on the west end. So now let's look at the east end where that the new building is would be going. The blue outline shows uh, the current tin fish outline, which you can kind of see here. So in, to, in order to accommodate that program or that amount of extra space that's needed, we're looking at a, a potential three level structure. And I'll just kind of go through this really quick. But uh, before I go through that, I just kind of want to go through some of the key considerations. So this addresses sea level rise. This is actually a little bit higher elevation than its current, the current tin fish is. The current tin fish is actually down here. Um, we're trying as much as possible to maintain uh, this bluff area here. We do have to cut into a little bit at the bottom. But uh, at the top, we're trying to not disturb any of that, which is the existing palms and the existing mm -hmm. landscape. Here's that existing retaining wall. <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, uh, the new structure is kind of tucked in between the two historic bridges. So what you'll see from the, um, the north and south side would be primarily the historic bridges and try to make this, this building a lot more, uh, I want to say, quiet or not trying to call as much attention to itself, even though there's a lot of square footage here. Uh, New public accommodations, of course, I talked about the ADA access improvements. We have a new public view deck here. And again, this is that deck that's accessed from both sides of the pier bridge. Uh, and the enhanced patio area, which is down here. So we create some kind of like either planter walls, but try to create a little more of an in, uh, a, a courtyard. So again, you're not in that traffic and all the pedestrians walking past you. So uh, that's one of the ideas to enhance the public experience. 
Uh, there's a visitor set of serving lease space here. And then above that is the 24 hours, uh, seven day a week operations that uh, Jared was talking about earlier. And then of course, uh, additional uh, um, spaces for the lifeguards, which is much needed. And then actually, we actually have some uh, storage that's kind of tucked in back here for the lifeguards. Um, sorry, I'm trying to see from this angle. Um, and then this is again, the existing bluff. And let me show you how much we would actually be cutting to the, the bluff. So here's just a very simple diagram that kind of shows um, the existing 10 fish foot um, area. This again, this is a cross section. And here's the current bluff. And then the new lifeguard facility is approximately about this size. Um, and then of course, this is the amount of bluff that we may have to impact. Uh, and again, we're, we're trying not to, to have this, this building go further west than the existing footprint of the uh, uh, 10 fish. I want to go back and mention one other thing too. One one thing, if we do have to put this, you know, much program here, which which is really much, you know, like I said, needed to support the uh, lifeguards, we were looking at this idea of staggering the the, the massing here. So uh, there'd be a little bit of a view deck here for the lifeguards. It staggers back a little bit further over here for this upper space. So that way you don't you don't get this big uh, sense of a, a building that's that's facing this courtyard here. So that's one of the architectural tricks would be stunning. But again, this is very uh, high level concepts. We're, we're still testing ideas and looking for feedback. And then um, this is a sketch. It's it's not by far the, the design right now. It's just one idea of many. And, uh, you know, is it, is it something that's more symmetrical? Is it something that's not symmetrical? We're, we're still exploring ideas and open to ideas. So, but we wanted to put it out there to start the discussion. So in summary, the design is, and again, what you see here is to meet the lifeguard space program needs, not only for now, but also out for 15 years. Uh, it accommodates the flooding and, and sea level rise. <clears throat> um, we try to minimize uh, impacts of the bluff. Uh, it meets the historic requirements. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it provides the public accommodations of enhanced public uh, experience, uh, increasing the public safety and providing uh, much needed ADA access. So with that, I think Jared's going to wrap it up and yeah, with questions. All right. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. Um, so just a, a, a brief overview of the, the project dates. Again, uh, you know, here we are at the, the public outreach meeting. Um, and again, you know, in the past year, we've had you, know, you can kind of see all the all the steps we've gone through. Meeting with OPAC, uh, various meetings with the Coastal Commission. Um, moving forward, um, we anticipate another meeting with the Coastal Commission hopefully this year. Um, we're putting together a feasibility study um, based off of feedback from this meeting and, and from past. And uh, we're going to meet with OPAC in January again um, coming up and then looking for uh, council approval of the selected alternative uh, in January or February next year. And then in terms of an overall time frame, Phase two is environmental study phase. Phase three is really final design and construction documents. And then, you know, we're, we're looking at construction wrapping up uh, middle of uh, 2027. Um, with that, uh, that concludes the presentation. And uh, Dara, I think uh, we plan on opening this up to Q&A. I think John's going to come up and help, right? So with that, again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for letting us get through the rest of the presentation. We can scroll back and, and through any of the slides that you want to see more information or ask questions on. Um, I'd say what we can open up to Q&A right now. And then following that, we do have information, like I said, dispersed through the room. But I'll have John help me out. We want to make sure we take any of your comments or questions. And again, we'll be happy to scroll through and get to any of the images that you have specific questions on. So we'll just. Yeah, my name is John. I'm with the consultant team. And so uh, I'll just help direct a, uh, questions to the right uh, experts on the team. So you have a question, sir? Do we, do we have a, it's early, I know that, but yeah, the design document for a rough cost of what it's going to cost. Can you sure. repeat the question and then we can answer? Um, is there a, an estimate of the cost of the project? Cool. So we're talking the microphone. Oh, sure. That way we can have everyone All right. get the answer. So, so in 2018, we put together a, a cost estimate just for the concrete portion. Um, uh, you know, we're working on a cost estimate right now as part of our feasibility study. Um, but the, the cost back then 
uh, generally speaking, just for the concrete portion, again, it's twenty eighteen dollars. A lot has happened since then. I think, uh, if I recall, the the uh, I think the restoration example of retain the historic fabric that was in the you know mid twenty million dollar range, and it was like five or six million dollars less for the the replacement is what we're looking at. Now that doesn't include a three story structure. Um, you know, the rough square footage of that is in the 6,000 square foot range. And so that, that wouldn't be included, obviously, but that's something we're working on. I don't, I don't know if there's, I don't think you can address this being from the city. Has the city said, we're going to give you X number of dollars for this project, keep it within this budget. Measure X money. Uh, measure X ends in a few years, but this is Measure X money. We have to watch what we're spending. The bathrooms down at the pier and the police station, which still isn't finished after two and a half years, that also was Prop X money. So I understand it's Prop, Prop X money, but that runs out, I think, in so, three or four more years. And just to reiterate your question, you were asking, you know, is there a budget that's been allocated to the project? Um, Measure X money is funding this. I do not know the exact date that the Measure X funding um, um, stops. I think it's in a couple of years. I think we're in year four of seven years. Um, we do have funding right now allocated in phases for portions of it. We do not have the full budget allocated in our budget. Um, but the intent and hope is that just like the Beach Operations Center that is recently completed, um, that we have Measure X money that is also supported with grant funding that had about $7 million. But to answer your question, Portions have been allocated, but not the full dollar amount. And then the last question, and I'll be quiet. The reconstruction is going to look similar to what we have today. Is that correct? Well, I'll let Jared expand on it. It's going to be it's going to be similar, but I do think he can clarify that some of the aesthetics. And to reiterate the question again, because this is going to be recorded and put on the website, your your question about the aesthetics if it's going to look the same. Um, Jared, I'll let you clarify, but the profiles, the slopes, the grades, all that will be the same. The aesthetic, the white stucco, right? That would change a bit because that was a modification to the historic structure. So I'll let Jared clarify that to make sure I speak correctly. Sure, Dar uh, sure, Dara. I think uh, I think you basically covered everything. But yeah, the, the last things you're saying that the white gunite and paint again originally it was just a concrete color. Um, that would be probably the most dramatic change from what you see today. Can you go back to the slide where you said the three-story building? Of course. The, the so one. where's the transition? Well, let me let me scroll back a couple more slides. So the, the point is this bottom area would be restaurant space. So if you go back to the sketch, yeah. and it, again, so just I, general sketch, that would be that first floor. Yeah, so, so the concept here, is that right? Like, yeah. This lower level would be the community space, potentially a restaurant space, and then of course we have the outdoor dining patio area. That would, I think whoever does lease that could use that too. I wouldn't have to climb over the bushes to get to the walk up the window. <laughs> I hope not. So the bottom level is uh, visitor children's restaurant. And then the second and the third level is lifeguard. Lifeguard support is correct. Right. Isn't that the same level as it is right now? Um, it's it's still going to be below the 100 year storm level, right? Right. right. Okay. It's, it's raised a little bit on, on, it's raised more on the west side. Oh, lifeguard well, well, the difference between it right there where it's at now and then back here. Well, so, this is a little bit higher elevation. Uh, actually, it's a little higher elevation. If, if you're there, you'll notice there's kind of a very slight slope that goes from the west to sorry, from the east side to the west side. It'll be a higher one year level, right? It's right. yeah. No matter what, if, if you get the hundred year storm, it's and you have a storm surge, you can see here's here's with no sea level rise. We're just at it, and and the problem is, is if you try to raise this higher. Uh, these are very tight. These are already about maybe I think I want to say ten. 11 feet floor to floor. So that's very, very tight once you get mechanical, all that support spaces. And we cannot go above this line. That's the magic line there. We have to stay uh, below or at, at the single elevation as specification. So, so why are you guys deciding to do this now? 
You know, it kind of looks like this all trying to make it look nice for the resorts up there. I mean, this is this is what it was. Oh, it's always bad. Why do you want to change it now? Well, I mean, you don't... right. So uh, just just to back up, the, the the first question he had just because we're recording this uh, is sea level rise related to with the the restaurant, the new restaurants basically. So. Um, again, uh, one more clarification on that from for Brick is that again, restaurant space isn't considered as high a risk as critical infrastructure such as lifeguard headquarters. You know, that's emergency services, and so that's held to a higher level of risk. Well, the whole right, right. 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 What was the purpose of Measure X money? Um, well. I, I'll try to chime in on that. But um, and again, I I apologize. I don't know all the details of Measure X money, but there were several targeted goals for the Measure X funds: um, public um, services, facilities, road maintenance. There was homeless programs. There was several items, and every year the budget is brought before the Measure X committee. Um, and there is Measure X funding for this project in portions. Now, to answer your question, your second one about why we're doing this now, and, uh, and Jared can elaborate for me, but the reason why we're doing this now is this is a 95-year-old structure that is deteriorating. And through our research, through our discussions and analysis, that's where we did determine that the lifeguard headquarters, which is housed in that peer uh, structure facility, is insufficient for our, our essential services. So by doing this I'll say potential location here where the tin fish is and building that structure. And again, without going into the, the aesthetics of it, it's to offset the space needs that, that the lifeguards have. So the reason that prompted all this is this facility is deteriorating. And at some point we do need to make improvements to it. We've been putting um, maintenance efforts into it, but again, we're at the point where we either have to rebuild it or retrofit it because it, it's past its useful life. We'll just, um, oh, thank you. You know, um, I'm glad you corrected your statement. That will always be a moderately priced visitor serving restaurant. Not if, but it will be. It's in our LCC. Message changed by someone, but I don't think they'll change it. Second, <coughs> I have a concern about the viewport. You know, Pier 2A is the main viewport or in our LCC. And we know what happened in Mission Avenue with all the palm trees, right? Our views are, are definitely have changed. Um, my concern and is that there are no renditions here whatsoever from the east looking west in that view quarter. What's it going to look like from there from the approach? Everything's looking this way. What are we going to see now? We get to see glimpses of the sand, people on the beach. You don't have anything. You have nothing well, there. I mean, we have some old historic photos, but no, they guys don't have But you know, generally speaking, you know, some of the things that aren't figured out, you know, the palm trees that obscure the view now. You know, we we don't know what's going to happen with those. Those might not be back. But again, concrete as you approach our pier and you're going down either side of the pier and you have this experience. It's a grand pier. We have seen this, right? And Part of it is if you have this clear distinction and you can see the the um, descent and how our pier descends as well. It's just uh, uh, architecturally, it's just beautiful. And I have concerns that we're not going to know what it's going to look like as we approach that pier from Fifth Street. I'm just I'm just envisioning a big bunch of concrete. <laughs> okay, well, for well, I, I'd say we're we're it's very early on. We're not even in the the. 30% design phase, you know, we're still in the concept phase. Um, you know, we've identified a space that's suitable for the lifeguards and the structure we're looking at. Um, that's certainly something that, that'll be considered, you know, moving, well, moving forward. Right. Right. I agree with you, we need to take care of our lifeguards, absolutely. Well, so, it, maybe I can help ask that too. Um, uh, Mike can go back to that second point. Because that, that's a valid point, but as Jared's saying, we wanted to come. Meet the community very early on without 
design it, taking it far down the road and designing it, and then we couldn't miss the mark. So we want to just like test, okay, well, this is the massing, this is what roughly the size of it. But but uh, now that we move forward, if, once we do get operation control, we're going to be developing and designing this. You're right, we got to do renderings looking from, from the corridors, not only from north and south sides, but also from the east approach. Directly east. So directly east looking down. Right now, you see the back of the tent fish. You can see, you know, they're. No, you see an exhaust. Yeah. You see an exhaust. Exactly. You're, yeah, I was being kind of. You're absolutely but right. there's open space there. You can also see this end. So, and while we're at it, I did want to bring back page 21. You know, I, I walked up here and I looked around and it's trying to get a little gentle descent from the pier as you head onto the wooden portion of the pier. You can see it. And then the building kind of encroaches on that. I want to know what that's going to look like. Right, and I want to know what the rails are going to look like having this concrete right next to it. It's really going to change what we have, and, well, and we're just not doing it justice because there's nothing here with any idea. So, definitely at the next level design, I think that's if, assuming this is all good, we're, we're going to move forward, then we would start developing actual architecture to show this is what we're going to look like. Here are views, probably photorealistic views too, just to kind of give you a strong sense of what we're looking at. Uh, one of the things we are trying to do too, uh, which is still very early on, is on either side of this, on, on the north side, it's a little tight. On the, on the south side, we're trying to create like a little view gap. So if you are down here or up, are up here, you can actually see all the way down, down to the new level. But again, it's still very early on. It's not, I know, it's, yeah, we got to work it. It's not the size. But, but that's that's the current intent. I think one thing to add, you, you mentioned the railings. Like we're putting the same railings back. Trying to go beyond that line in terms of the actual facade. There's a little bit of a view deck that pops out, but that is pretty much the line we're trying to maintain. Right. Uh, right. Try not to go farther west than the tin fish. Would it be going underneath both sides, walkways up? Kind of reflecting a little bit of what the whole restaurant is. That's, well, that's a that right. diagram, I, I, or is that? Got your massive diagram. Yeah, let's, let's look at that. And that's a really good point. We are trying to re to bring those back. Right now, they're all shuttered off and closed. So here's a massing diagram. This is that area that you're talking about. So here's the old arches right now poured up. So we want to use part of that space to, to bring that and, and use it for the light guard piece. We'd probably bring the windows back and make it you know, look like a smorky. In fact, originally, this was actually a passageway. And there's a little spot right here that you could actually look at the bluff. So we'd like to bring that back, too. On the north side, this was, again, Underneath the, the pier bridge, we want to restore that, open it up, and then actually integrate the elevator as part of that. So we're hiding the elevator so you don't see it. Um, and especially you don't see it from Pacific Street. You'll, very, you'll just get a little bit of a glimpse of it at the bottom. We think we could use materials like channel glass to make it look very transparent so it's not this big blocky elevator that comes out of the middle. But again, that's still very early on and kind of back into the architecture. So well, I was just wondering if there's the Diagram before didn't really indicate going underneath there. Yeah, I'm thinking if you need six thousand square feet, you could probably take that to the two story building if it went out to the edges. We, we looked at that and we're actually using part of the spaces under here and here. Uh, there's a lot of other support spaces that need to go, uh, for instance, you know, parking or trash and phones, right? What yeah, they've got a bunch of storage for trash. A lot of things we're trying to hide and tuck in there, so we're using a lot all that space. And, and since this is a, a steady initial phase, um, we don't have all the aesthetics and design component, which we will dive into in the next component. But part of the reason by doing this tier three, three tiered structure is we have been having conversations with Coastal Commission about the existing bluff. Um, and some of the initial feedback we've received is maintaining a much, <clears throat> excuse me, as much of that bluff area as possible. So. In theory, by doing a two-story building, if we still have the same space needs, we would be taking up more of that bluff area. And so it's that fine line of trying to balance the space needs that we have, maintaining the affordable visitor-serving, you know, lease space, 
um, maintaining some of the bluff. And that's where, again, this is a um, part, part of having this dialogue today is just to show you how we kind of balanced all of that to meet all those needs. And so again, I, I can understand your comment about doing it. Um, two story, but that was some of the impacts if we did do that. So, oh. uh, speaking of the cultural commission, I just learned that the area up top where all the kitty cats are, the squirrels, the <laughs> dirt area, um, that a, a number of years ago, the city asked uh, or petitioned or whatever the cultural commission to to build something, some kind of like a platform or something there. And then nothing would be higher than what is there now. And if the Coastal Commission denied it, well, I, I know the Coastal Commission has morphed over the years, but still, why would they deny that and allow you to chop off some of the bluff? I can't speak. So to clarify the question, it sounds like there was something in the past that city staff reached out to Coastal Commission to build a platform area above part of that bluff. Um, I can't speak to all that, but I can say in my discussions and our discussions with Coastal Commission, um, we haven't received any definitive answer yet, um, as much as I would like. We are just in general discussions with them because they need more information. But based on those general discussions we have had, um, they, the balance of the sea level rise and our essential facilities and, and pushing those out so that we can address those in the long term and, and bring them up. There's acknowledgement of needing to go into that bluff area a bit, but they haven't said yes or no. They just want more information, which is what we're trying to do is how we can balance all that with minimizing the bluff development. Okay, and to, to compound on that, I just learned tonight that um, apparently the harbor master, and I don't know if uh, the gentleman from the uh, fire department slash slash our dancer, wanted to float the idea that the top of the Jolly Roger should be used for lifeguard purposes. And I just heard about this today, and I don't know, I guess that was proffered by the by, by the Harbor Master. And I wondered if anyone from the city could explain that brilliant idea. I, I know this is off <coughs> this particular thing, but is there anything on that? I was going to say, to, to clarify the question about developing above the Jolly Roger uh, and the Harbor Master, I do not know anything on that item, so I wouldn't be able to speak on that. Okay. So to clarify that, I'll have Jared and maybe I might have Captain Curtis kind of expand a little bit more, but but where are existing life? So the question is why maintain the lifeguard headquarters where it is now versus an uh, alternate? Kind of and redesign and redo everything right there. Why there? Why not at the harbor? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm Again, um, my understanding is that that area has critical sight lines for our lifeguard facilities and critical access um, by keeping it there and expanding it into the bluff area to meet their needs. We're keeping it in that centralized location. Um, Captain well, Curtis, I don't no want to. There's no way of redesigning that without going a big hole among people's structures there. Can, right? To redesign it? Yeah, I mean, that bluff. That's what you guys are so worried about is that bluff. You know, we're redoing the bluff and we're building this here too. So, why there? Well, like we were. Kind of talking about earlier in the immediate vicinity we we did look at other potential locations to be close to the existing lifeguard headquarters but we are very limited with options and that's where ultimately it was um, deemed that this seemed the most viable most feasible location to put this infrastructure um, but that's again why we wanted to present the information tonight and have this open dialogue about how we did look in in the vicinity and and how to make that balance so yeah there's there's a lot of there's corn of the physics in this pond right i think that's going to be the balance i there is a vacant uh, the lot the vacant lot at pacific in wisconsin i know there's a vacant lot because i parked next to it but um 
I do not think it's a city one. It probably is going to be a private that will be developed. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, did I cut you off? I, yeah, that's the only presentation we're getting right now. There's no other option. Just getting that thrown at us and then. We can go back. We do have that slide that shows the the vicinity. That's not the the case. This was just meant to take the information that we collected during our study and during our, our analysis to figure out where are potential locations in the same vicinity. And so, you know, we did look at the site, looked at available spaces, and ultimately, the space that was. Um, where the tin fishes and above seemed like it was the most feasible, most practical space to put this location. And that's why we wanted to have some initial renderings just to show and have discussion purposes for tonight. So, oh, thank you. Um, I have another point. Um, the space between the two rails coming down mm -hmm. is worked wonderfully now. I'm very concerned about parking lot between them. It sounds great in your rendering to have all the people out there that are going to be all animated, but then it's not indicated by right after the guy home. So it becomes a very ugly space. Um, with the bluff, the city needs to think to get different departments together and work together. We kind of feel like being told by public works or by somebody else. We need real place making. We need top quality place making first. Before anything is considered about this thing or something that was discussed, what's the place? Three stories in there doesn't work at all. Um, that that platform is just going to be a, a parking lot full of random people and trucks and who knows what. Um, I can see vendors showing up and buses and all kinds of people that we may or may not want it there. Um, it seems to me that the uh, bluff. Well, could repaint it with the two story building uh, that may go all the way back, but and drop it down to the two story level and then put a restoration in there, a total restoration of that entire area and also the entire block all the way behind the, uh, the uh, community center. Because mm -hmm. right now it's just crap plants that instead of our most critical habitat, which is total block. So having that and that as mitigation for somewhere else uh, could be the best option. Um, we had a brilliant planner that was pretty interesting. She actually wrote some work in her own computer task was on our staff. Brilliant presentation for the one and done. Um, and he always talks about the city being postcard view. We have no postcard view. Number one, we just all call to. Every single one of them needs to go. No, none of those policies. We have bought this on mission. There's still one in the middle of the road in the view corridor on mission. And then they expect some on top of the building. Uh, anyway, we don't need them. They all need to go in the pure view lane, the view corridor. Not one policy. Everything needs to drop to the original coastal habitat. Okay, it needs to drop significantly. That area could be green, could be um, a living area. And, and that should be happening there. Um, the third thing is any building done needs to be inspired by urban design. Okay. What it, you're showing us looks like some condo thing that they're building now in Tremont or whatever. And you know we're not going there. So it really needs to be built by, um, not for being by Urban Hill, but inspired by Urban Hill, as many things in the city are. And a very strong, strong. And it, it does seem that, um, the lifeguards there we could work out something better. The back side of the amphitheater uh, could be used in, in a better way. Uh, I don't think we need a two-way street right there. Um, and that, that space could be rethought. Why we didn't rethink it in the separation center, I don't know. So but we've got to stop being in the silos. I'll, I'll chime in on a couple of things. And then what I'd like to do is um, Again, based on your comments, that all the comments we've received so far, I really want to make sure that we get those relayed. And if you have more comments about palm trees or aesthetics or anything like that, 
please, please, please make sure you note those because this is just one part of many phases that we're going to have. And we are not in the design phase yet, but getting these comments now can help as we get to that. But to talk about the um, the, the piecemeal, the silo kind of component, I was the project manager for the beachfront improvement feasibility study. And so as part of that, we know that that site overlaps um, with the pier bridge and the pier bridge cuts right through it. So the intent was having that cohesive city staff person, which I'm gonna try to be, um, for both projects so that we, we're looking at it as a whole, um, looking at the whole area. Now, Beachfront Operations Center Phase 1 has already been completed. Um, we are factoring that in, but the hope, the intent, the goal is to look at this area cohesively as we progress to the next phase of this project. Um, the Beachfront Feasibility just went to council last month. Um, and at that, I, uh, at that meeting, we did discuss the intent the um, goal of co coordinating these efforts. So hopefully that will kind of help as we progress with these. Um, and then I, again, to kind of go back to tonight's intent and hope is to get comments um, that the three-story, two-story, you know, there is that balance. Um, I, I can speak to a certain component, but you know, we do want to get as much feedback from the regulatory agencies as possible, which includes Coastal Commission and their initial feedback. And I'm not discounting that because that's what the intent is for tonight in our first meeting. And to clarify, we do have another uh, another public meeting, which will be at our OPAC, and then this will go to city council. So there still is an opportunity for the public to like attend. Whether, and if you want to plan on changing the beach. Look, why don't you like advertise? Hey, everybody, we're going to have a little gathering down here at the amphitheater. Anybody who's interested in coming to see what kind of design we're presenting to the community, you're welcome to come down and have an input. But here's the and, and we're not in the design. So, to answer your question about community input and design, when we get to that next phase, which we're not in the design phase yet. We are still going to have public outreach, public input, because we want to make sure that the buildings that we build, the aesthetic of that, that we do have that feedback. So I do want to conclude the open, but staff is all here because I know everyone still might want to talk to other people and other staff. And if you could please, any of the comments you have, um, but we'll disperse right now, but we can answer any questions. So. I'm sorry if I'm question about so the footprint for the tin fish versus the footprint for the proposed building, this will be our kind of conclusion for it, is it does not project any further into the open plaza area that the the blue is the building, is the building. Yes, the blue is the building itself. So. No, it's not. It's not no. So this, this is the tin fish, that should go back. But that's a good picture right there. Yeah. So here's we the tin fish for turn. We have a little space here. Uh, and then this is the actual building footprint. You kind of see the building right here. Right it's it's back area. So the intent was the intent was to keep that facade, that front projection of the tin fish, and go backwards and not project any building into the public plaza and the open space. Um, and so that's why we wanted to show the illustration of tin fish. So we would be going further into the bluff than the tin fish currently does. So the footprint does go deeper into the bluff, but it does not um, change from its current facade. So, um, Dr. And it, there's just one thing that was said tonight now, it's just a little confusing because I understood that there will be some kind of deck area for lifeguards. It's going to be protruding over as an overhang or something of uh, the restaurant space. Is that correct? That, that's this part here. And actually, we're okay. That goes 
further. We could push that back. Yeah. 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 Right now we want to we want to think about a small awning area. So we thought, well, if we have an awning to protect the space here, like you want to walk up and order something. I think that's where that, confusion. that could be a detail we can look at more because I know when based on the feedback I, I received on the feasibility study and all of our outreach for that, we know how important that open space is and that access. And so that was the intent of that first floor. We don't want to go any further than that. Um, but to what Rick was saying, what you just brought up, there's certain things that based on comments we get tonight, we can look at in further detail. So, um, but okay, one more. And then I want to make sure, because I know, go ahead. Go back to one of the slides where you showed that there's going to be houses in there and you see the showing lifeguards that are needed. With the yellow highlighting. The, the space needs. Wow. That was this. That one. That's probably the summer. There we go. <laughs> 24-7 lifeguard operation. So that is a complete change of what we have now in the right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the plan for the harbor is to have 24-7 lifeguards. That's, that's the plan that just got put forward mm -hmm. for the harbor. So are we going to have two 24-7 or are we putting everything in here, which is going to be a complex of the harbor, because the harbor is paying for the 24-7 lifeguard service. I'll have Captain Cruz correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is to to, to um, expand on the 24-7 operations that was recently um, approved and which is noted on here, that in the interim, in the temporary, the 24-7 the would be housed in the harbor area, and that now that council has approved the 24-7, if this moves forward with the space, it would be relocated over here. Am I speaking incorrectly? It would be in two. Okay. I spoke incorrectly then. Well, that so it would be in two. Would that, that have to get revised again because it was already approved for the harbor and the harbor is paying for it and the harbor wants 24 7 covered. So we're going to have two. So we've already identified that the tier is seven. So, since there might be more questions and detailed questions, and we have a moderate sized group, um, what we can do is you know, continue those conversations, but I just want to make sure everyone gets an opportunity that came tonight. And again, I appreciate you coming. Um, that if you did have a question and you didn't get it answered, or if you didn't have an opportunity to talk, we still can. So we'll jump over here, but thank you again for coming. And um, we will have this recorded and put on the city website. If you want to watch it again, if you have more information, the presentation will be on the website as well. Um, my information is right there, but um, uh, if you did come and you were able to give your email address too, I want to make sure and keep you updated as we progress with this project. So please do so. And again, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,